LA Unified School District, as well as San Diego, announced uh, that they're going to enter into the fall school season the way they ended last uh, school uh, year, and that is by utilizing distance learning. I want to just acknowledge and applaud uh, the leadership uh, of those districts. That's California's Democratic governor, Gavin Newsom, praising his state's two largest school districts, Los Angeles and San Diego. And that praise coming after they announced they will begin the school year online as coronavirus cases have spiked again in the Golden State. The decision is affecting more than 800,000 students, and it comes as other states take different paths to classes resuming with some planning hybrid options. So some parts at home, some parts digital learning, and they'll do a mix during the week at some places. But the conservative-leaning Orange County Board of Education voted yesterday to reopen schools in time for fall classes for in-person learning. And it says it will not require social distancing or wearing a mask. They say, quote, among our greatest responsibilities as adults is our responsibility to model courage and persistence in the face of uncertainty and fear, which is what many families are feeling with the mixed messages and confusion surrounding reopening schools in the COVID-19 era. Joining me now, White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany. Kaylee, great to have you on the programming today. Good you to know, I, I want to start there because some of the, the concern is that the science speaks for itself. And, and we're learning a lot. We even saw the president in a mask over the weekend. So we're learning a lot as we move forward. Some people were ahead. Some people are catching up, whatever the picture looks like. In a school setting, it isn't just about the kids. It's about those older educators, too, and those kids going home to their grandparents, particularly in communities of color, because, you know, you're not hiring a nanny. You're depending on your aunts and uncles and grandparents and maybe spreading it to them. So the kids may not get sick, but we don't know enough. Dr. Burke says we're not testing enough of them to know if they are asymptomatic carriers under the age of 10. We just aren't. So let me point out a few things, Harris. One, the president's been clear that he says vulnerable populations um, among our teachers should stay home. Um, that being said, Dr. Redfield has said on the record, he's the head of the CDC, that this has little effect on kids, um, an analysis that many in the academic community agree with. And he has said not only that, but they're not driving the transmission cycle. There was a study of schools in northern France that found that despite COVID um, being in three schools, there was no transmission cycle that was driven. The schools were able to safely reopen, even in this COVID era. Um, and we know that in, in California alone, there has not been a single death under the age of 18. So kids are not affected in the same way of, as the vulnerable populations, uh, which should stay home. Um, in those areas, and I, I hear you about France, they don't have the number, certainly not 825,000 kids in a school district or across two school districts. But I hear you about um, particularly putting these kids in peril the numbers don't support that they would be necessarily the carrying part we, we can agree to disagree on until there's more science. But who was the president talking to and listening to in terms of parents? Because I, I want to pop this up. 71% of U.S. parents polled in the new Axios Ipsos coronavirus index say it would be risky to send children back to school in the fall, including nine in 10 black Americans and even a slim majority of Republicans. Um, that polling particularly pops when you again consider that in those areas, that's where COVID-19 has decimated so many people among all ages. Well, first, let me note on the Axios poll, uh, we don't agree with the way that question was phrased. It was phrased in a way that it seemed to try to get to an answer rather than truly and accurately poll the nation. Hmm. I think parents across the nation understand the science, the data, and the numbers, which is one-fifth of child abuse cases are identified in schools. We've seen a 62% decrease in reporting on child abuse here in D.C. Uh, they know that 70 to 80% of kids with mental problems get their treatment in schools, and they know that, as McKinney Mm -hmm. Kinsey and Co. modeled that low-income communities are hurt the most. Um, you have 7 in 10 Latinos and about 7 in 10 black Americans saying they are worried that they do not have the skills um, or the resources, I should say, at home uh, to, to prep their students and keep them up to par educationally. And that is a real fear many have, and it's a, it's a correct fear. All right, real quickly, is the president going to rip funding for schools that feel like they're in areas where the cases are spiking and they can't reopen? 
The president has always acknowledged that this is something that he'll take a look at because he believes it's paramount for kids to uh, go to school, but he has also said he wants that funding to follow the student. And in fact, I, I will note for you here, Harris, in phase four, we're fighting for tens mm -hmm. of billions in extra funding for our students. So we want mm. to increase it, but we want to target it at the student. Phase four, be great if Congress would get back to work then, right? Oh, yes. I said the quiet <laughs> part out loud. Um, Hillary Clinton, once again, raising the alarm about the November election with this warning about President Trump if he loses re-election. Watch this, and then I'll get your reaction, Kaylee. I think it is um, a fair point to raise as to whether or not, if he loses, um, he's going to go quietly or not. Uh, and we have to be ready for that. Not just Hillary Clinton, though. Joe Biden also raised the same possibility last month when he suggested the military might have to escort President Trump from the White House. When I sat down with him, the president said if he loses, he'll deal with it the way that everybody else does, basically, paraphrasing him now. What's the latest reaction from the White House on this? Well, it's quite comical to watch the Democrat Party talk about not accepting the results of the election because the only people who haven't accepted the results of elections are people in the Democrat Party, like Hillary Clinton, who's blamed her loss on, I think it was something like two dozen different entities, never blaming herself, and Stacey Abrams down in Georgia, who still maintains she didn't lose the election. Of course, she's the uh, losing uh, former Democrat nominee for governor. So the Democrats have problems with this. I think this is their way mm. of acknowledging they think they have some real problems in November. All right. Kaylee, thank you for being on the program. I look forward to next time. Anytime. You. Thank you, Harris.